If you own a 360 degree action cam, you probably know this problem. You went out, shot some amazing footage while skiing, snowboarding, biking, or whatever you did, but then you get home, put all your footage onto your computer, and you just don't have the right way or tools to like get a very smooth end result. So that's why I want to show you today my ultimate way of editing 360 degree footage to get from something like this to something like that. So yeah, let's without further ado, jump right into the video. First of all, we are going to install the GoPro Reframe FX plugin. Don't worry, it does work for all cameras, not only GoPros. You can either look it up or find the link in the description below. Simply download the right version for your system and install it. After we install the plugin successfully, we're gonna go to Premiere and just add a new sequence. I'm gonna go with a standard 1080p 20 frames frames per second. And then we're just gonna drop our footage onto our timeline. Gonna keep the settings. And now we gotta find the plugin which is called Reframe, GoPro FX Reframe. We're gonna drag that onto our clip. And so under effect controls, we see now here the plugin. And the first thing we're gonna check is the projection that's set. So um, here you have to choose which type or which resolution uh, your output is. So I have standard 16 by 9, 1080p. Uh, so I'm gonna leave that. But for example, if you would uh, use it for Instagram for or some other aspect ratio or like 4K, you can choose that here. And what I really like about this plugin, which is kind of the highlight, when you click onto the name, you see a uh, overlay pops up. This makes it very easy to navigate and to frame your shots. So you see this middle ground. You can drag here and see I can navigate my framing uh, through the footage. And then you have all these other sections out here. So the top and bottom part, you can zoom in and out. So I can drag in to go closer or go further out. So. On the sides, I can control the roll axis, so to speak. And on the corners here, you can drag and adjust the lens curvature if you want to. All the settings you can do also here on the side panel. So for example, I'm just gonna put in 70 as my lens curvature because that's usually the type of number you wanna put in. So it's like a very, very normal type of looking shot but it depends on the, on the situation and also the camera you use. So then we have all these other keyframes, which are basically um, the things we adjust while we are moving here. So we can also just go in here and change a number so it will change the framing. And we have this advanced tab, which gives us further options to, um, for example, add motion blur or subtract it. We're gonna take that off, but we can come back to that later. To animate this, we're gonna start and make sure the first frame of the clip and just start adding all those keyframes. Then, I'm gonna click that back and say, okay, first shot, I'm gonna go here. And now I'm just gonna go through the clip and adjust the framing and it will automatically set keyframes for me. And the rule of thumb I use to make it like the smoothest it can get is I wanna add as little keyframes as possible. So to achieve that, I'm trying to get, um, for example, while I'm snowboarding, I'm trying to get when I'm in the curves, while I'm like turning, trying to get those moments and then adjust my framing. You can see it already added another keyframe, so I can zoom in a bit, you see? And then I will think right here and make another selection go on a bit leave it i just guess that's my dad by the way and so you see it's a bit laggy so if you have not a strongest computer you probably would use proxies um, i'm already set on a fourth of the resolution but still my computer has some struggles to keep up with it and yeah so we just go through add all the keyframes we need. So 
So after we edit all the keyframes, we can just have a look on them here. Um, we're gonna have to make them like buttery smooth because right now it will just bounce all the way from right to left to right to left. But in order to achieve the smoothness, we're just gonna select all of the keyframes we have here. Go right click and go to continuous Bezier. So we're just gonna do that and we'll automatically um, make all the keyframes smooth. So if we're just gonna render that out, after Premiere finished rendering, we can have a look at it. And for me, it looks buttery smooth. We don't have any bounces or anything. It just follows me very smoothly. Yeah, so no problems there. And then we go to effect controls. And let's say you go to a specific point and say, okay, well, at that position, I, or well, maybe here, I want to be a bit more zoomed out. So I can go here and click here again and zoom out a bit. Yeah, so and it will automatically add new keyframes. One thing you have to do now though, is you have to select all of them, put them back on, put them on linear and then put them back on continuous. Um, because otherwise you can run into the problem that Premiere won't make these keyframes smooth and you will have a bounce effect. I don't know why this happens. I think it has something to do with how Premiere is handling those keyframes. Now, if you like put all your keyframes in, you did your framing, your animating, um, you can go in here and play with the advanced controls. One thing, like the most, the most important thing here is the motion blur. You can use that in case you have very fast like pannings or tiltings or you just move the, the framing very fast because then it will add motion blur. In my case here, um, it made the video very, like it desharpened it kind of, it made it very blurry um, where it shouldn't have been. So I will let them like deselect it here. So I have a little bonus tip for you now. So we go to our project and let's say we like the video so much and we wanna share it on Instagram. So we're gonna go but another sequence, we make it uh, a vertical video now. And we're just gonna copy our video over. And of course, we're gonna run into the problem that we have black bars because we have a 16 by nine video, but a nine by 16 sequence. So instead of like just scaling it up and making it like blurry. Um, we have the very cool feature here to just change the projection type to 9 by 16 and the plugin automatically will cut out a different part of the 360 image, like a different aspect ratio. So we don't have any black bars, we just have a different field of view basically. And now we can, we can go through it. We are still tracked all the way through it. So no problems there, very easy, very good. So that's for today's video, guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you want a more deep dive into this plugin, I link down below a video of Ab Kislovitz. He goes a bit deeper into all these functions and really can show you how you can use this plugin best. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if so, consider giving a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you didn't enjoy, well, Maybe give it two thumbs down, I don't know. But anyway, have a nice day, see ya.